Hello and welcome to Chalk Solace Interviews. So today I'm happy to be joined by Seth Lewis, uh, who is an American living in Ireland. Uh, we won't hold that against him. <laughs> um, he Thank is uh, involved in uh, Middleton Baptist Church. Hello, Seth, how are you doing? Doing well, thank you. So Seth, uh, maybe for our viewers here today, so we're going to be talking a bit about your writing, your blog and your upcoming book, but can you tell us how you came to Ireland? Because uh, I believe you're originally from Florida, is that right, Seth? Yeah, I was born in Florida, grew up in Alabama, um, went to Bible college uh, in Virginia and worked at a, a church there for a while, but we were my wife and I, um, we really felt like if we could, we wanted to be somewhere where there weren't so many churches. Yeah. Um, and Alabama, Virginia, uh, all of those places there, like the church we worked at in Virginia, there were 10, 10 good churches within about 10 minutes driving down the road where our church was. And um, so we started looking at other, other places and, um, we, it was a long process, but eventually we ended up in Ireland and we're very happy. We've been here for about 12 years. Wow. So, so you're, you're really engaged with, with the culture and um, the community as well, I guess. So it's, it's good to hear of your story. And would um, Alabama, is, is that part of the Bible Belt, I guess, it would be a very Christian oh, yes. uh, state. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of churches, a lot of Christians. You're, you're basically surrounded by Christians in your day to day life. Yes. Well, yes and no, because I mean, sometimes it's a bit it can be a bit foggy, I suppose, is a yes. word for it, where a lot of people have an understanding of the gospel, but not necessarily um, a commitment to it. Uh, so people have it, it can be hard to tell where people stand sometimes in a context like that, where a lot of people have heard everything and know everything, but they don't necessarily it's not necessarily real. Um, so, yes, there's a lot of Christians. There's a lot of great churches. There's a lot of wonderful things, but there's some of it, you know, whenever a movement like that becomes so big and uh, it, it can it can get a, mi a bit mixed. Uh, so it's hard to tell exactly where everybody stands sometimes. Yeah, I, I understand. And sometimes that can be uh, more difficult in regards, uh, you know, when you try to evangelize these people, they're like, oh, sure, we're Christian. We know what you're talking about. Um, so to, to kind of get through. And I guess in Ireland, being a very strong Catholic nation, um, a lot of people might find that uh, difficult as well. Um, um, you know, when you talk to people, they say, oh, sure, we're all Christian. We're all we all believe the same. But then when you really get down to it, you can kind of connect with people a bit better if you, you know, go through the gospel and say, well, do you believe in this? Do you believe in this? This is kind of the truth behind it. Um, and growing up, you know, kind of Catholic, coming out of the Catholic church myself, um, people, you know, kind of seem to think that, you know, they have the same beliefs as you. But then when you when you kind of get down to it and, and talk further and get into it, um, it, it, it can be a good way of um, you know, just um, discussing the gospel uh, with people from, from different communities. Yeah, and that, that's just the way it always is, isn't it? I mean, it's, you can't take somebody just by the title they call themselves. Yeah. Whether that title is generally um, good or whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's, you have to take people as individuals and their, their understanding of the gospel and their relationship with God is unique to them. And you need to take them where they're at, not just listen to whatever title they're telling you. And Seth, you do quite a bit of writing as well, and you've been very kind uh, to Chuck Solis here, and we've been reusing uh, quite a few of your blogs on our website. So you have a website, setlewis.ie. Can you tell us uh, maybe a bit about uh, the topics that you cover um, on your blog? And I guess, uh, why did you start uh, writing a blog? Yeah, so the reason I called it after my name was really just because I didn't have, like some blogs have a theme that they want to cover 
they want to talk about a certain thing. And I thought about that, but I, I just wanted to be able to talk about anything. <laughs> so um, basically the blog is whatever I happen to be thinking about. And what I would like um, to just kind of talk about as well. And one of the reasons I started it really was just to, these are the kinds of things I want to be able to have conversations with people about, whether it's just things about life in general or things about faith and God, um, but it's things I would like to be able to talk about with people and it, often you don't get the opportunity or maybe you do with a few people close, but then there's people that you kind of lose track of. You might still be friends on Facebook, but you don't really see them anymore. And it's a good way to kind of engage with people um, that way. And, and I've been very pleased that people do, people do engage with it. And uh, it's opened up some good conversations that way. Because uh, reading your writing, um, it's quite nice the way you start off. You usually start off with maybe something that's happening in your life, whether it's with your children or maybe someplace uh, you've been. I read one recently about, I think it's titled The Headless Head of Ireland, if I, if I get that right. But it, yeah. you, you have a very nice introduction, um, but it always kind of leads to something in the Bible, uh, the gospel. And I guess in the same way in the Bible, uh, Jesus, he didn't just go out to the people and start talking theology. He he gave them something relatable, maybe something that was that was around them at the time, or something that they knew in regards uh, harvesting and regards farming. So I just see in in your blog the same um, similarities with uh, writing about how you can relate to people. Uh, do you find that this a good way to uh, uh, grab people's attention? Yeah, definitely. And you're right. I mean, that's that's what Jesus did often. And I think it's a really good model for us to just connect with something that anybody anybody experiences or, or knows about and and then take that and, and just try to put in a focus on something that's true. And um, I tend to try to keep the post very short so you can't say a lot, um, but just to leave people with something that will, that they can think about. Uh, and and usually something that will point them to scripture or something that will point them to the Lord as well. Um, not 100% of the time, but but usually uh, that would be the case. Yeah, that, that's, I guess, what we are, uh, is our commission to constantly be pointing towards, towards Christ. And is your book in the same vein? Because um, I believe you have a book that's going to be published next year. What is the theme of the book that, that's coming out next year? Yeah, so... That's right. I've signed a contract with a good book company and it should be out late next year. I don't have a date on that yet. Um, just in the writing process right now. The working title of the book is called, it's called Dream Small. Dream Small, which okay. sounds, Dream Big, Dream yeah. Small. Okay. Right. I know it sounds backwards. It sounds backwards to everything you hear all the time. And um, really that's, that's to to try to show that a lot of the times, you know, dream big is, is not a bad thing to uh, to encourage people to do, but it's it's very vague. What, what are you dreaming about? What are you, and why? And um, the purpose of the book is to show people that, um, not that big dreams are bad, but that actually a lot of the things that people are encouraged to dream about, whether it's um, becoming an influencer or being famous or, being rich or being highly successful in the ways that most people think about. A lot of that stuff is not nearly as important as it seems or as we're told. Mm. And especially in the light of eternity, in the light of the gospel, these are not actually the main things. And so what I'm trying to show is that actually a lot of times the things that are the most important are things that the world considers pretty small and overlooks. Jesus talked about the least of these, uh, the people that are generally overlooked. And he said, these are, you know, whatever you've done for them, you've done it unto me. And so obviously the world may overlook them, but Jesus says, that's very important. Or, you know, your own hidden relationship with the Lord and, and the character that he's forming in your own heart, that can be easy to overlook. It doesn't look like the big success that we're encouraged to have. And yet, actually, 
long term, that's much more important than the big success. And so, uh, how far along are you set with the book? Is it finished, or is it still in the process of being written? It's not finished. It's it's. I did finish um, the first draft last okay. month, which felt really good. Uh, until I started getting the edits back, and then I realized <laughs> there's a lot more work in this. So. Um, yeah, so I'm working through the edits right now, and uh, it's it's a big process, bigger than I kind of anticipated, but uh, it's good, um, and I'm I'm very thankful for the Good Book Company is a great publisher. They're very just gospel focused. Um, they want it to be faithful to Scripture and really point people to the Lord, and that's what I want to. And so, I'm really thankful for their help, and um, so it's it's. It's coming, that's, and I'm that's, I'm to have it done by the end of the year. That, that, so I that, think we'll get there. That's good to hear. Yeah, we have a, a, quite a number of titles from the Good Book Company, and you can always trust them to be to be solid. Um, and that, that's what we at Chalk Solace we want to be, as as I've alluded to before, want to be pointing to Jesus and want to be solid in what books we recommended. We have made mistakes in the past, and we're continually you know trying to update and, and trying to be as as gospel focused as possible and you know true to our beliefs as well um and Seth just uh talking you are a writer um and but looking at the background it looks like you're a reader as well would I be true in saying that yeah that's right that's right yeah and could you share with us maybe some book recommendations uh, you could have we love getting book recommendations from our guests um because um you know getting book recommendations from a person that they can verify, you know, what's in and what's good. Um, it can be great for, for Christians. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. One, one that comes to mind just that's been very helpful is um, Jerry Bridges is, has a book called trusting God, which is just excellent. Actually anything by Jerry Bridges. Um, one that's another one that's helped me really is, um, well, C.S. Lewis, obviously very popular, but Mere Christianity. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've just recently started one by Paul Tripp called The Age of Opportunity, because we have teens, we're starting to, into parenting teens, and that's a book about parenting teens. Um, I haven't finished it, so I can't say anything about the ending, but I know the okay. beginning is excellent. And um, his brother, Ted Tripp, wrote a really good book on parenting younger children called um, Shepherding a Child's Heart. Okay. They're, they're, they're um, all good so there's, yeah. Yeah. And because um, we actually are um, bringing a bookstall to a parenting conference uh, in October. So I'm, I'm definitely looking to, at those parenting things because it is very important. Um, I'm not a parent myself, but it, you know, getting good resources for whether they're children or teenagers, especially in this day and age, uh, with what is out there. Uh, we thought it was yeah. bad in our day, but you know, it, I don't know, it, the world keeps on getting worse in some ways, uh, especially for, for teenagers. So to have good resources for them. It is, yeah, it is, it's hard. And different stages call for different approaches, but both of those, the Paul and Ted Tripp, both of them are very much, very good at cutting to the heart of the matter and, and not just dealing with kind of behaviors or how do you get them to mind that kind of way, but actually how do you point them to the Lord and teach them the gospel through all of these things. Um, and it's just, it's really good to keep that focus um, that whether, whether it's setting boundaries or disciplining or whatever it is, it's actually the focus is not just on having good kids, focus on, ha on having kids that love the Lord and pointing them to to him so i really appreciate those that, that that's great here to, to bring up children um you know wanting to know more about jesus wanting to know about the word is is very important through their younger years and, and going into their teenage years as well and to ask questions as well we we've got a lot of recommendations for um and maybe more of our kind of apologetics ranges of books especially for teens um who want to ask questions and their their peers are asking them questions maybe about God maybe about the Bible and you know questioning is it true and why they why they believe in such a thing um, 
do do you find in Ireland um is it's is it a bit different to the states in in the questions people ask you? Um, I suppose yeah, there there are some differences in, as far as just things the things that people focus on. But um, I mean, in, at the end of the day, people are people everywhere, and we're going to be dealing with things that are. Um, roughly similar, they might come out in different ways, but the heart of the matter is, is often quite similar. People need the Lord, that comes out in a lot of different ways, but that's yeah, the reality. That's it, and, and the older you get, the more you see that uh, as an individual and society around that, that we definitely need the Lord. Um, and I just want yeah. to thank you, Seth, for your for your time today. I, I really enjoyed talking to you and I, you know, will be praying for you in the, the finishing or or the second draft or the third draft or how many ever drafts you need to get through. And I'm sure yeah. you might come back on again when the book is released and we can do some promotion with you as well for that. Love to. Yeah, very good. Well, uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. And as usual, any of the books that Seth has mentioned that we have in stock will include links uh, below the video here. And we'll also include a link to um, Seth's website, setlewis.ie, if you want to check out his great writing there before the book comes out. Um, I just uh, want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, just like and subscribe and uh, share this video with your friend as well. Mm -hmm.